Hello friends, and welcome to a little travelogue. My name is Hele, I live in Denmark, and this summer I had the privilege of visiting a country I hadn't been to before, namely Croatia, more specifically Dubrovnik. The privilege was doubly felt this summer because our airline, SAS, had cancelled many of their flights in the preceding weeks due to a strike among their pilots. Up until the time we sat on the train heading for Copenhagen Airport, we didn't know if we were going or not. Thankfully, we found out we were, and we felt very grateful. Already in the taxi from the airport, booked and prepaid through booking.com, by the way, so there was a driver waiting for us at the airport. The country looked stunning. When we arrived at our hotel and found our room, we couldn't believe our luck. We had a view of the sea, which we hadn't even ordered specially, because it was more expensive. We didn't linger that evening, however, but headed immediately for the old town, partly to see it and partly to get some late dinner. Dubrovnik is a medieval town right on the Adriatic Sea, and the old town, behind the old city walls, is deservedly a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We had talked about going there for a few years, but partly due to COVID, our plans never materialized. Oh my God. Then last year, I finally saw the final seasons of Game of Thrones. In fact, I saw all seasons twice, and that made me want to visit Dubrovnik even more. If you're not a fan of the show and you don't know what I'm talking about, well, neither did my partner or my daughter as I rambled on about certain scenes and locations, and yet they fell in love with Dubrovnik as well. It's magical in its own right and full of history, and we saw both locations from the show as well as many other quirky corners of the town. It's a maze of tiny streets and alleyways, and it reminded me in turn of Venice, the Gothic quarter of Barcelona, El Gotique, and the oldest part of Lisbon, Alfama, with its labyrinthine stone streets, many of them impossibly steep. The location of our hotel was second to none, and we never tired of our view. The pool area was much needed those first few days, when the temperatures rose above 35 degrees Celsius, or 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a lot to us northerners. We mainly used it to cool off and headed into the old town several times a day, about a 10 minute walk. <laughs> it was a different experience seeing the town during the day, and I was struck by how bright and clean it was. We soon found out that the town was a popular venue for weddings and saw several wedding parties during that week. What struck us on this day was how they were all wearing fancy dress in intense heat and didn't seem to mind, whereas we took to the shade whenever possible. The wedding reception was held in one of the squares, among stands where people sold fruits and vegetables. We were about to walk past it, when I recognized an iconic location from the show, the stairs where Queen Cersei begins her walk of shame. My family were, thankfully, patient with me as we went to take a further look, one of many during that week, and I saw many fans lingering near the staircase, more and more as the week progressed and the number of tourists increased. You could even order a shame burger in one of the cafes near the stairs. We walked around in the tiny streets and alleys and realized that one of the reasons it's so lovely there is that there are no cars, no stressful noises from traffic, which is such a relief in modern life, I find. The sound of a church bell, on the other hand, is calming and melodious and a reminder that the place is chock full of medieval, baroque and renaissance churches.
We saw cats everywhere and wondered how they dealt with the heat. Some of them were painfully thin to look at, but every now and then we saw some of them eating cat food off the pavement. <laughs> at the beginning of our week, which was at the beginning of July, the number of tourists was still reasonable. We didn't know the place would be swamped by the end of our stay, but it would. If you've seen Game of Thrones, maybe you recognize this place from those fateful scenes in Season 8 where King's Landing is, well, burned. And here you may recognize the location where someone shouted at King Joffrey. And both gates were used too. There were restaurants everywhere and rooms and apartments to let everywhere too. On most mornings, we walked down to the pool area after breakfast to cool off. And every morning too, I looked over at the old town and marveled at the beauty of it. We were relieved and grateful to be able to jump into the Adriatic to cool off perfect temperature and completely clean and lovely. Walking into town in the afternoon, we once again sought the shade whilst exploring parts of the town that we hadn't yet seen. Thankfully, the shade and the stones made the heat slightly more bearable although the many, many stairs made us hot and our legs sore. If you ever decide to visit Dubrovnik, which I hope you will, be prepared to walk up and down a lot. Because walking is the only way to explore the old town. And bring sensible shoes and very light clothing. We had an early dinner at a Mexican restaurant, where a group of men nearby were rehearsing for a concert. In the evening, the temperatures were slightly more bearable, and as the surrounding gardens and the pool area were empty, we walked down to the sea. I loved the vegetation there, the big old trees, the cypresses, the bougainvillea, but also the roughness of the stones and the crashing of the waves. No wonder the tourists flocked to Dubrovnik. We considered jumping into the sea at night to cool off before going to bed. But the water looked just a bit too rough and dark by this time. By the way, the temperatures eventually fell to a more moderate 27 degrees Celsius, 
and we even had an overcast day with a bit of rain, which was fine by us. The next day was fine again, but the rain made me realize that that was a reason why the vegetation there was so rich. We took a boat one morning to the island of Lokrum that's visible from the mainland. The boat ride only takes 15 minutes from the old city harbor and the island is a popular place to go swimming and walking around. And it's the location used for Karth in Game of Thrones, visited by Daenerys Targaryen in season 2. It was excruciatingly hot the day we visited it. And we walked, or climbed, in the midday heat up to the Fort Royal Castle that we'd seen from our room. The view of the Adriatic and of Dubrovnik was amazing from there. The garden scenes in Karth were filmed in the Botanical Gardens on Lokrum and in the former Benedictine Monastery, founded in 1023. The monastery was abandoned in 1798 and in 1859 the Austrian Archduke Maximilian Ferdinand built a luxurious residence on the ruins of it. Today the island is a nature reserve and a special forest vegetation reserve and the only inhabitants on the island are families of peacocks, originally introduced to the island in the 19th century by the Austrian Archduke Maximilian. When we came down from the fort we encountered a little flock of peacocks that were clearly used to humans. Then we entered the monastery and I could clearly recognize it as the location of the garden scenes on Karth in Game of Thrones. Inside there was a replica of the Iron Throne, which of course I had to sit on. And they also gave us a taste of the time when the monks were there in a lovely cool basement. We explored more of the gardens, which thankfully had a lot of shady spots. We headed back on the boat and by this time about half our trip was over. I will share the other half in the next video and hope you'll come along again. Thanks for watching and if you've ever considered going to Dubrovnik, consider this a recommendation.